Hey everyone. So welcome back to our PGCET 2024 essentials video. Hope our last video regarding your speed math helped you a lot and you enjoyed it. So coming today, so we are going to take it forward for the most important topic in your PGCET quantitative ability that is regarding your ratios and proportions. Most of your quants surrounds this one topic. If you are thorough with this one topic, many concepts will be crystal clear. Okay. So before we dive into the topic for today, I have a very exciting announcement for you people, which will help you out in your preparation very quickly. Okay. Let me just take you through. Now, here, if you see, this is the Learn Group portal or the web application. You can navigate to learn.learncrew.org where you can find this application available. So under this, there is the mock test, the preparation materials and the recorded videos and everything available. Now we have gotten some free content for you people, which will help you in your preparation for a very quick update. Firstly, just navigate to the search and search for Karnataka PGCET. Once you search through it, you can find all the resources available over here from the ebooks, the video courses and the quizzes. The quiz section is completely free, 20 questions each, every day it gets updated. I would recommend you people to take up this quiz, at least 20-30 quizzes so that you get used to the paper pattern of it. Okay. Just how to do it, just start the quiz and you can start answering the questions. For example, I'll just answer randomly some questions and I'll just submit the quiz. Now, once you start answering these questions, once you start answering these questions, you can see what is coming over here. The score you secured is two marks and out of two are correct out of 20 questions. Now you can also check for the solutions of these questions. Just go to the solutions and you can see a train running with 54 km per hour, blah, blah, blah. What is the solution for it? An explanation for the same thing is given below it. So each and every question, whatever you try out will be having a subsequent solution to it. Check it out in order to get much more updated answers. The preparation will get better. Okay, so in this way, attempt some 30, 40 questions, which will help you out in cracking your PGCT really very easy. Okay, not only this. Now, in case, in case if you want to access some more mocks or anything, you can buy the mock test, which is available around 10, 15 mocks are available over here. You can buy it and you can use it else if you want to go completely free. I will be updating some more mocks in this section else you can navigate back to something called as PGCET over here you will find PGCET MBA and MCA okay go over here and you will find again in the test series logical reasoning and quantitative ability the topic for today is your ratios and proportions this concept is not something new to us during covid most of us were inside home and we wanted to explore something new and everyone were interested in cooking right not me <laughs> okay but everyone were interested in cooking we tried different recipes which were shown on the internet we were more excited on it now during that point of time what we understood was they used to tell for every three cups of water add one cup of rice which can be given to four people so what do you understand from it so now a quick explanation of it three cups of water one cup of rice how many people can it be saved for four people four people the same thing, if I am proceeding further, I am telling, I want to cook for 12 people. I want to cook for 12 people. Then what will you do? 
ओके सर यू वॉन्ट टू क्विक फॉर ट्वेल्व पीपल सो इंस्टेड ऑफ फोर इट इज ट्वेल्व पीपल सो हाउ यू गॉट फ्रॉम फोर हाउ यू गॉट ट्वेल्व सर मल्टीप्लाई बाय थ्री सेम थिंग सो हाउ मेनी कप्स ऑफ राइस शुड आई एड मोर सर दिस इज मल्टीप्लाइड बाई थ्री मीन्स मल्टीप्लाई दिस ऑल्सो बाई थ्री एंड दिस ऑल्सो बाई थ्री सो इट विल बी नाइन कप्स ऑफ वाटर एंड थ्री कप्स ऑफ राइस इन ऑर्डर टू क्विक फॉर ट्वेल्व पीपल दिस वॉज द बेसिक अंडरस्टैंडिंग वॉट वॉज दट थ्री इज टू वन सर इनिशियली वॉट यू सेट इट इज द लीस्ट फॉर्म ऑफ सिंप्लीफिकेशन ऑफ अ गिवन रेशियो आई कुड हैव ऑल्सो सेट नाइन इज टू थ्री नाइन इज टू थ्री this is to cook for 12 people now can i simplify this yes absolutely so i can simplify this as 3 3 0 3 1 0 4 0 so 3 is to 1 is the ratio for cooking for four people the least form of representing a given ratio or a given numbers which is similar quantities both these are similar quantities i cannot tell like uh, i have to cook for uh, 100 people and 100 people have to watch movie now these two are not similar quantities both are different extreme quantities so whenever you want to do a ratio it has to be of similar quantities then you can start using it okay ratio is an exciting area now what do i mean by exciting area now let me take a small example again okay what i'll do i will tell the ratio of boys is to girls in a school is given by 4 is to 5 boys is to girls okay so what does this mean for every 4 boys there are 5 girls yes sir so now if i am multiplying this by 5 it becomes 20 for every 20 boys how many girls are there again this also needs to be multiplied by 20 so every 20 boys there are 25 girls okay sir this ratio can also be represented as b by g that is nothing but the boys divided by girls both are same 4 by 5 okay b is to g or b by g both are same absolutely same no hindrance in it okay sir great now what do you want to tell now in that case if i am taking a normal ratio 1 is to 2 and i am asking what is the duplicate okay let us not take 1 is to 2 let me take 4 is to 3 now this is the simplified ratio of it when somebody ask you what is the duplicate ratio of this given number duplicate ratio is nothing but square square of the given ratio it means 4 square is to 3 square that is nothing but 16 is to 9 this is duplicate ratio when they ask what is the sub duplicate ratio now what will you tell sir sub duplicate ratio means square root of 4 is to square root of 3 this is sub duplicate ratio now if they ask triplicate ratio it is nothing but cube of the given ratio if they ask sub triplicate ratio cube root of the given number it's all done as simple as that so now if they ask a question what is a duplicate ratio what is a sub duplicate ratio what is triplicate ratio what is tri sub triplicate ratio you are aware of it wonderful now let us take the examples directly and from there we will start solving the questions they have given something like this a is to b is 7 is to 5 b is to c is 9 is to 11 a then what is a is to b is to c a is to b is equal to 7 is to 5 b is to c is equal to 9 is to 11 now in these two ratios what is common b is common right b is common if b is common is the value of b common no value of b is not common 
now what can i do i have to make the value of b common now what is your traditional school approach what you used to do sir i have to make it common so take the lcm of 9 and 5 multiply this first ratio by 9 multiply the second ratio by 5 it will become equal yes what it will become 7 into 9 is 63 Is to five into nine is forty five. Nine into five is forty five. Is to eleven into five is fifty five. Now what has happened? All of a sudden, b value is same. Once b value is same, what I can write, sir? A is to b is to c. I can identify now, sir. A value sixty three. Yes. Sir, b value is forty five. Yes. Sir, c value is fifty five. Yes, absolutely fine. Now this is your traditional approach. Now some people will tell, easy no, sir. Do it. Yes. This is okay. No problem. Let me show you my approach, which is much more faster comparatively. I hope so. Okay, don't scold me in the chats then, sir. How is this faster? Okay, let's see. How is this method faster? What do you want to find? A, B, C. A, B, C. Then what do you want to do? A is to B is given as seven is to five. B is to C is given as nine is to eleven. Okay. Now let us come to Indians. So we all are Indians. Okay. There is an empty house or an empty land next to our house. What we used to do? We used to go and park our vehicle there. We used to play there until somebody comes and tells that is our space. We used to do whatever we want because that is our our property that is not your property that is our property right we imagine that and we start doing it then what we do we occupy it same way b's next house is empty here also nine's next house is empty what they will do so they will tell this is my property they will go and park their car this will tell this is my property i'll go park my car okay sir then what is the benefit of this sir right 7 into 9 63 9 into 5 45 11 into 5 55 what is the answer that you wanted same thing same thing no change easier method this is what your ratio and proportion can do so in exam whenever you get a question this way do not spend time in finding lcm and then finding out the answer it will take out a lot of time instead just do this it becomes much more easier right okay great So now, if this is clear, let's go to the next question. Next question: A is to B is given as one is to two, B is to C is given as three is to four, C is to D is given as five is to six. Okay, sir. Same thing, sir. Yes, right. A, B, C, and D. What is A is to B given as one is to two? What is B is to C given as? Three is to four. What is C is to D given as? Five is to six. Okay, sir. Sir, I will start occupying the houses, sir, or the land, sir. Yes, two, two, four occupies here. Three occupies here. Five occupies. Five occupies. So then I'll start multiplying, sir. Yes, one into three into five is fifteen. Two into three into five is six. Six into five is thirty. Four into two into five is four into two is eight. Eight into five is forty. Two into four is eight. Eight into six is forty-eight. So, fifteen is to thirty is to forty is to forty-eight is the answer. See how quickly you can get the answer because you know one important step. This is how it becomes easier. So, is it that's all, sir? No. Still, there are a lot more to come down. Let's go to the next question. Now, next question is a divided by b plus c is two by three. A divided by b plus c is equal to two by three, and b divided by a plus c is equal to one by two. Okay. Now, before th we get into this question, one small query. When I tell the number of boys is to number of girls in a school are in the ratio five is to four, five is to four. What is the total number of students in this in that school? Five plus four, that is nine. This is the total number of students ratio. Okay, 
total number of student ratio how sir if this was 5 into 10 this is also going to be 4 into 10 that is going to be 50 this is going to be 40 that is 40 plus 50 is 90 for every 50 boys there are 40 girls and the total student in the school is 90 students wonderful so in order to find the total quantity what we used to do we used to add up the ratios in order to find the total great if that's the case if that's the case now let us come to this scenario what is happening over here sir a divided by b plus c is 2 by 3 b divided by a plus c is 1 by 2 wonderful now what will you do sir they all have to add up to the same value let it be a a plus b plus c a plus b plus c should be adding up to the same value let us see what is it adding up to a plus b plus c is going to be 2 plus 3 that is 5 a plus b plus c this is going to be 3 sir they are not adding up to same if they are not adding up to same then what you need to do find the lcm find the lcm what is the lcm for 5 and 3 15 so multiply this entire thing by 3 multiply this entire thing by 5 so what happens 2 into 3 is 6 divided by 9 and this becomes 5 divided by 10 what is the benefit sir what it add up to 15 what it add up to 15 so a plus b plus c is common what is the benefit of this we got the value of a is equal to 6 the value of b is equal to 5 what is the value of c then sir b plus c is 9 so b is 5 c is going to be 4 that's all so what is the value of a is to b is to c 6 is to 5 is to 4 this is the answer as simple as that just one rule you should remember that sum of all the ratios should be equivalent to the total if that is answer both ratios should be equal if that is not equal then make it equal how to make it equal take the lcm of it and then solve it that's done right so this is the way you solve this particular question next coming to this the ratio of expenses and savings of anand is 26 is to 3 if his monthly income was rupees 14500 then what is his monthly savings now you are working and you have a lot of expenses as soon as you start earning you will tell it's my time now i am going to buy an iphone for me i am going to take a bike for myself i am going to do that this everything so then end of the day they also ask what is your savings then we start thinking yes what is my savings i need to check it out same way anand there is a person anand who is having an expense is 26 is to 3 monthly salary was 14500 then what is his savings they are asking easy don't worry expense is to savings what is it given as 26 is to 3 now what is going to be his income income is it going to be expense plus savings this is going to be income so what is 26 plus 3 29 ratio that is nothing but is income ratio right income ratio now what was his total income which was told 14,500 so it means 29 ratio equal to 14,500 right or what is the value of one ratio sir 14,500 divided by 29 so now 14,500 divided by 29 is nothing but 500. 500. So now one part value is 500. Then what are they asking? His monthly savings. What is his monthly savings ratio? Three parts. If one part is 500, what is going to be three parts then? 3 into 500. That is nothing but 1,500. That's all is the answer. So what is happening expense ratio is to savings is 26 is to 3 obviously his income is to going to be 26 plus 3 that is 29 ratio that 29 ratio is equal to 14500 is his salary 
If 29 parts is 14,500, what is the value of one part? That is going to be 500. If that is 500, what is going to be the value for three parts? Three into 500, that is 1,500. So his monthly savings was 1,500. His expense was 13,000. So this is what is the thing over here. Becomes easier, right? So this is how you can start solving this particular question. Next. Monthly income of Abhi and Karthik are rupees 6,000 and 8,000. Okay, Abhi and Karthik monthly income are 6,000 and 8,000. Okay, if their expenses are 70% and 80%, expenses are 70% and 80% respectively, find their savings. Okay, what is income? Expense plus savings. What is savings then? Income minus expense. Income minus expense is going to be your savings. Now, what do we want to find here? Sir, the remaining 30% value. That is what we want to find. 70% is expense. How much is savings then? 30%. 80% is expense. How much is savings then? 20%. 100% is income. Right? 70% is expense. Obviously, remaining 30% is savings. Similar way, 100% is 8,000, 80% is expense, remaining 20% is their savings. Now, what do we, we, we need to find? Find their savings. So, what is 30% of 600? 30% of 6,000. Okay. Now, a simple rule. What is 10% of 6,000? 600. What is twin? This is 10%. 10% is 600. And what is going to be 30%? 1800. Done. Similar way, what is 20% of 8000 they are asking? What is 10% of 8000? 800. Then what is 20%? 20% is going to be 1600. So their savings was 1800 and 1600. So this is the way you can solve this question. There are multiple methods to solve it, but this is one of the methods to solve it much more quicker. See, imagine just your entrance exams are to test how quick are you and how accurately you can answer. It's not about giving the answer, spending five minutes, six minutes on a question. 30 seconds to 40 seconds a question is more than sufficient. That should be the actual speed what you are finding at. And that too, your PGCT level questions are going to be way too easier. There is no negative also. So be very assured of giving the answer within 20-30 seconds. In case if you are not able to do it, go to the next question and then come back and attempt it. Okay. There is also something called as art of living the questions. Means. It's not necessary that you need to attempt all the questions. You can afford to skip certain questions. You need to choose those which are difficult for you. Then now don't tell me, sir, everything is difficult. I'll skip everything. Then you won't get marks. Don't worry. <laughs> right? Okay. Coming to the next one. A sum of money is distributed among ABC such that B gets 12.5% more than A. But 25% more than C. If A and C have totally got piece 5700, what is the difference between A and C? Okay, now A, B, C. Okay. A, B, C, some money is distributed in such a way that B gets 12.5% more than A. It means B has 12.5% more than A. Additional. Additional. Now, see, I tell all my students to remember percentage to fractional conversions very necessary and useful now what is 12.5 percent is 1 by 8 1 by 8 since they are telling increase b gets more than 12.5 percent 12.5 percent more it means 8 is the actual 8 is the actual total value Additionally, is getting one part more. So it means B's part is 9, A, A gets 8. 
this is nothing but b by a b gets 9 where a gets 8 this is 12.5 percent more so now the value of this is 9 and 8 9 and 8 but 25 percent more than c now what does this but represent the but represents the first person but 25 percent more than c it means 25% can be represented as 1 by 4 that is nothing but 100 by 4 is 25% 1 by 4 25% more than c it means 4 is the value of c b gets 1 more than c that is 5 by 4 is nothing but your b by c so your b value is 5 and c value is 4 so this is what we got it from here 12.5 percent more than A and 25 percent more than C. So this is how you get the solution for this. Now, after this, you know it. What to do, sir? This is occupied by C. This is occupied by B. Then I can multiply, sir. 8 into 5 is 40. 9 into 5 is 45. 9 into 4 is 36. That's all, sir. Yes. Now they are telling A and C totally have 5,700. Means. A plus C totally they have five thousand seven. That is nothing but forty plus thirty six. That is seventy six. That is equal unto five thousand seven hundred. So what is value of one part then? One part you can find it out. Once you find out, then what are they asking? What is the difference between A and C? They are asking. What is the difference between A and C? Forty minus thirty six is four ratio. That is what you need to find it out. Now what is the value of one part? Five thousand seven hundred divided by seventy-six. That is nothing but your seventy-five. If this is seventy-five, this is going to be how much? Seventy-five into four is three hundred. So difference between A and C is three hundred. Okay. So this is how you can solve the question. Easy questions. Just you need to start applying what you have learned. That's it. Okay. Next one. This is pretty much straightforward. Find the share of Akram if 220 is distributed among Akram, Vinod, and Kavya in the ratio 2 is to 3 is to 6. So how many people are there? Three people. What's the ratio distribution? 2 is to 3 is to 6. What? How much is being distributed? 220 is being distributed. What's the total between them? 2 plus 3 is 5. 5 plus 6 is 11 ratio. 11 ratio is value is what? 220. Then what is the value of one ratio value? That is twenty. If one ratio value is twenty, what are they asking? Find the share of Akram. What is Akram's ratio value? Two parts. So one ratio is twenty. Two ratio is forty. It's all done. It's all done. What is happening? A total amount of two twenty is distributed among Akram, Vinod, and Kavya, who are in the ratio two plus three. Two is to three is to six. That is nothing but eleven ratio, and that total is equivalent to how much? Two twenty. If that is two twenty, what is the value of one ratio? Twenty. If that is twenty, what is the value of two ratio? Forty. That's it done. So this is the way you can solve this particular question. Hope this concept is getting much more clearer. Next, find the difference of share between Lakshman and Krishna. If 500 is distributed between Mega Lakshman and Krishna in the ratio 2 is to 2 is to 1, now what are they asking? Find the difference of share between Lakshman and Krishna. What is the difference of share between Lakshman and Krishna? 2 minus 1 that is 1 ratio. We need to find the value. Okay, 1 ratio is the difference. Now how much is distributed among three people? 500. So 2 plus 2 plus 1 is nothing but 5 ratio. That is equal unto 500. Then what is the value of one ratio? Hundred. What do we want to find? One ratio value. Then hundred is the answer. One step answer. The question seems to be like with names and all, but the answer is just one step. Right. So this is the advantage of knowing ratio. It comes still more advanced problems or like really good problems are there. Okay. Next one. If rupees three thousand nine hundred is distributed between x, y, and z in the ratio one by three, one by two, and one by four, 
find the share of x now so until now everything was given in a proper format but what is this a fractional values don't worry what is given 1 by 3 1 by 2 1 by 4 what is the lcm for these three numbers 2 3 and 4 12 12 will go in 3 how many times 4 times 12 will go how many times 6 times here it will go 3 times the ratio becomes 4 is to 6 is to 3 now what's the total amount distributed among these three people 3900 so 4 plus 6 plus 3 is how much 13 ratio that 13 ratio is equal to how much 3900 then what is value of one ratio 300 Value of one ratio is three hundred. What are they asking? X share. X is how much? Four ratio. That is going to be four into three hundred. That is nothing but twelve hundred. Now this is how you solve this particular question. Whenever it is given in fraction, take out the LCM and find the ratios. Once the ratio is done, then you can find everything else on its picture. Right? This is how it goes. Great. Now coming to the next question. Four ten is divided among Ashok, Prem, and Sanjana in such a way that Ashok, there are three people: Ashok, Prem, and Sanjana. Such a way that Ashok gets fifty more than Sanjana. What is the meaning of more than Sanjana? Additional, additional fifty rupees more than Sanjana. Ashok gets. Okay, uh, Sanjana. Prem gets rupees thirty more than Sanjana. Okay, let us assume that Sanjana gets rupees x. Ashok gets x plus fifty, fifty more than Sanjana, and Prem gets thirty more than Sanjana. It is nothing but x plus thirty. This is how much? This is going to be x plus fifty. This is going to be x plus thirty. And this is going to be x. Now what are they telling? Four hundred and ten is divided among these three people. Now this is what ratio. Now x plus fifty plus x plus thirty plus x becomes three x plus eighty. That is equal to four ten. What is three x equal to then? Four ten minus eighty. What is that going to be? Three thirty. Then what is the value of x equal to? One hundred and ten. It's all done. Now what are they asking? What is the share of Sanjana? Sanjana is going to get rupees hundred and ten, right? So the word-based problems are also really good. Just start solving much more problems so that you get used to the pattern of it. Okay, only practice is the key. Do not leave that. Once your practice is done, you can explore anything that you want. Next. Just let us do some two three problems more. Then I'll give it to you homework. Great. Okay. Okay. Now, now this is very good. The present age ratio of Arthi and Priya is four is to seven. Okay. There is a person called as Arthi. This person called as Priya. They are in the ratio four is to seven. The present age of Arthi is twenty eight years. Twenty eight years. Then what is the present age of Priya? Now, whenever you get age-based problems, remember one thing: you have present, which is represented by zero for our shortcut. Whatever you want, you can do it. Present. Next, you have future. F. Then you have past. P. Okay. Now, whenever ratios is given in present, age also should be in present. When ratio is given in past, age also should be converted to past if it is given in present. Okay, if ratio is given in present, age also should be in present. Ratio is given in past, make the age also to past. Sir, why, sir? Now, Arthi's current age is twenty-eight. After ten years, what will be Arthi's age? Thirty-eight. Easy to tell. Keeping age, I can tell after ten years thirty eight, before ten years eighteen. Now Arthi's current age ratio is four. After ten years, what will be Arthi's age? Can you tell fourteen? No. 
it is ratio you cannot do that way right so we cannot modify ratio values but we can modify with the ages so keep your age ratio as the reference do the remaining thing as that okay this is what you need to start doing okay sir great so now what is given present age present age of these two people is given as 4 is to 7 what is arthi's present age given as 28 years so 4 ratio is equal to 28 or what is the value of one ratio value 7 years if one ratio is 7 years what is the present value of priya then 7 into 7 that is 49 years 7 into 7 that is 49 years what is happening sir 4 ratio value is 28 that is for arthi's age so one ratio value becomes 7 years if one ratio value is 7 years i need to find priya's age that is nothing but 7 ratio so 7 into 7 becomes 49 years that's all done what was difficult here nothing this is as simple as that okay next one the present age ratio of arthi and priya is 6 is to 7 the same two people arthi and priya the present age ratio is 6 is to 7 after 6 years what is this present age after 6 years arthi will be 48 years old now what is said whenever age is given in present age ratio is given in present age also should be in present now what is they are giving after 6 years after 6 year means future age future age of arthi is 48 then what is the current age sir easy sir 48 minus 6 that is going to be 42 correct very good so now what happens arthi's current age is 42 so 6 ratio is equal to 42 what is one ratio value 7 years if one ratio value is 7 years what is priya's age 49 years so all done same question but slightly change of the words this is how you solve this particular question great so hope this concept is getting much more clearer okay now a different problem of the same type the ratio of age of abhijit and kishore is in the ratio 3 is to 8 find the ratio of the age gap after 4 years if after 10 years the age difference will be 35 years nice question right find the ratio of the age after 4 years if after 10 years the age difference will be 35 years now a small question right now me and my brother okay me and my brother we are in the uh, age ratio something like 2 uh, is to 1 okay 2 is to 1 or i will tell more simplified way i am twice the age of my brother i am twice the age of my brother when my brother is 2 i was 4 hmm twice the age of my brother now after 100 years what will be my age i have got a lot of answers on this after 100 years my age will be you will tell sir easy sir come on 100 plus 4 is 104 now what you will tell here sir your brother's age is twice no or like you are twice the age of your brother then your brother should be 52 this is what you used to tell but is it right no then what is happening over here now when i was 104 my brother would have become 102 because it is after 100 years age difference now comes the concept of age difference what was the age difference initially 2 years what was the age difference now 2 years after 100 years also age difference is 2 current also age difference is 2 now what does it mean whatever time period you take age difference between two people shall remain same right now if you are 20 i am 30 age difference between us is 10 years this 10 years is going to be same even if you become 50 i will become 60 if you are 70 i will become 80 same thing it is not going to change age difference shall remain same whatever it is okay this is the main concept what i want to tell if this is clear 
now what are they telling sir they are telling after 10 years age difference will be 35 years means difference of their age is 35 years it means abhijit and kishor what is the difference age ratio phi ratio and that is equivalent to how much 35 years if phi ratio is 35 years what is value of one ratio 7 years great now what are they asking find the ratio of their ages after 4 years after 4 years means we need to find the present age first okay this is the present <laughs> present age this is the present what is the present age of abhijit and kishore it is going to be 7 into 3 that is 21 7 into 8 is 56 is the present age after 4 years means plus 4 is going to be 25 is going to be 60 they are asking the ratio that is going to be 5 5 is 6 uh, 25 5 12 is 60 5 is to 12 is the answer right so this is the way you can solve this question everything based on logic or an approach it's not about taking x see you haven't seen me taking x and unless at one question i think remaining everything is solved based on logic so this is the way you can solve it okay now going forward the ratio of present age of raj and sam is 5 is to 6 before 3 years it was 2 is to 3 find the age of raj after 5 years nice question what are they asking the present age ratio of raj and sam is given as 5 is to 6 this is present age ratio Before three years, it was in the ratio two is to three. Before three years, it is nothing but minus three. Sir, why sir minus three? Let us take the timeline again. This is present. This is future. This is past. Okay, present uh, past before three years means it becomes minus three. After three years means becomes plus three. From the past to future, how many years total? Plus six years. Age is always going to be the number of years is going to be calculated addition. No problem. Okay, so now, so what should we do from here? Easy, don't worry. So what I said, let it be in the past, let it be in the future, let it be in the present. Always the age ratio is same. If the age ratio is same, what is the difference between five and six? One. This is nothing but the age ratio. What is the difference between two and three? One. This is nothing but the age ratio. Age ratio is same. If age ratio is same, I can directly subtract it. What is six minus three? Five minus two? Both are. Three ratio. What is three ratio equivalent to? From zero to three years. How many years are there? Three years. So three ratio equal to three years, or one ratio equal to one year. What are they asking? Find the age of Raj after five years. What is the present age of Raj? First of all, five years. Present age of Raj is five years. If present age is five years, after five years it will be five plus five. That is. 10 years that's all done right so this is the ratio and proportional question okay now what i want you to do is i'm having another three problems over here okay i want you people to just give a try for these questions you can keep it as homework let's give a try and find what is going right and what is going wrong okay i want you to do this Sincerely.